Hello, my name is Nick, and welcome to this uh, short video on recording a 12 lead ECG. The first thing to point out here is that although it's called a 12 lead ECG, there are in fact only 10 physical leads to put on, so don't go looking for two more. There are four limb leads and six chest leads. So, why do we call it a 12 lead? Well, through the powers of witchcraft and physics, we ignore one of our physical leads, which is just an earth lead, and create three extra virtual leads by combining information from three other leads. Confirm that you have the correct patient, explain to the patient what you want to do and what you need them to do, and gain their consent. You may also need a chaperone. As always, don't forget to wash your hands at the point of patient care. Ask your patient to undress from the waist upwards, including bra if necessary. Socks and tights should be rolled down or removed so that you can get at the lower legs. The patient should be positioned where possible flat or in a semi-recumbent position and comfortable. They should remain covered whilst you enter the patient's demographics into the ECG. Unusually for a medical procedure, we should do an ECG from the patient's left side where possible so that we don't have to lean over the patient. Check that the machine is set up correctly. The paper speed should be 25 millimeters per second and the gain at 10 millimeters per millivolt and the filter at 150 hertz for a standard ECG. Next, you need to find your landmarks and place your electrodes. Start with the limb leads, one sticker for each limb. Debate exists as to where exactly you should put these electrodes and whether it should be over bone or muscle. So no matter what I say here, someone will disagree with a plausible explanation of why. I personally tend to go with the inside of the forearm over a bony prominence to limit the amount of muscle interference. However, if the patient is tremulous, then I would move more proximally to limit the amount of interference caused by the tremor. For the lower limbs, I just tend to use the medial aspect of the lower half of the tibia. Next, place your six chest leads, V1 to 6. If the patient is particularly hairy, you may need to consider shaving patches of hair so that the electrodes can come into contact with the skin. V1 goes on the fourth intercostal space on the right sternal edge. V2 goes on the fourth intercostal space on the left sternal edge. V4, yes I know I've missed out V3 but bear with me, goes on the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. V3 then goes directly between V2 and V4. V6 goes in the mid axillary line in the same horizontal plane as V4. V5 goes halfway between V4 and V6. In ladies, the leads should go under the breasts rather than over them. Connect the leads to the ECG electrodes. The leads should be clearly marked. R for the right upper limb, L for the left upper limb, F for the right lower limb, N for the left lower limb. Then V1 to 6, sometimes C1 to 6, for the chest leads. Ask the patient to relax and breathe normally and not to move around. Check that you have a clear recording on the screen for all your leads and then press the ECG record button. All machines will vary a little so make sure you're familiar with the one you're using. Check the quality of the printout and then if you're happy disconnect the leads from the patient. If you're not happy then repeat the recording until you are. I always give the patient the option to remove their own stickers from their body to avoid waxing them. So there we have it, the basis of recording an ECG. Next you need to learn how to read one. Make sure you go to a practical workshop and learn all the intricacies of recording the ECG that can't be covered in five minutes. Thank you for listening.